Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, Senator Warner and I are here with uh, a couple of our allies uh, to announce the introduction today of legislation that uh, I think uh, meets a, a couple of criteria. When you think about the most important task that, in my view, Washington, D.C., Congress, and the President have to resolve, it's job creation growing the economy. Uh, and when you think about the greatest complaint about what's going on in our nation's capital, it's lack of partisanship and working a lack of bipartisanship and the failure to work together uh, to accomplish the goals that we need to for our country. Uh, and we very much believe that what we're presenting today uh, addresses the issue of job creation uh, in a very uh, substantive and significant way, uh, and that we're doing it in a way that uh, should lend itself to, to no real opportunities for Republicans and Democrats, uh, White House and Congress to be in opposition to uh, the details of our legislation. Uh, we, Mark says we hope. Uh, we think we're there. And certainly our, our goal was to do something that mattered, uh, something that uh, provided, uh, made a difference, uh, but did so without creating uh, kind of the political enmity that seems to arrive uh, so often uh, in the work that we try to accomplish uh, in our nation's capital. Um, I certainly want to acknowledge Senator Warner and his role. We have developed a, a, an awfully good working relationship, and uh, I'm honored that uh, someone of Senator Warner's background, experience, and caliber has, uh, has joined us in this legislation. Uh, especially also pleased to have uh, Steve Case, the co-founder of AOL, with us, uh, one of the leaders uh, on the President uh, Obama's Council on Jobs and Competitiveness. Uh, and also uh, Brink Lindsay is here. Uh, Brink is with the Kauffman Foundation, headquartered in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, and the uh, what what initiated this uh, legislation uh, in 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 my world uh, was a report by the Kauffman Foundation uh, demonstrating by absolute uh, scientific based research the value of entrepreneurship and job creation in the history of our country and what has transpired in recent years and more importantly this uh, this uh, thoughtful uh, foundation has provided a path suggestions of what policies could be, uh, could be uh, brought forth that would create an entrepreneurial environment in our country today. And so we're very grateful to the uh, Ewing Mariel Kaufman Foundation in Kansas City for providing the, the substance, the, 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 the real um, uh, support uh, that demonstrates the value of what we're uh, attempting to accomplish with this legislation. I particularly got interested in this uh, and, and, and landed with the Kaufman Foundation report on my desk at a time in which I was discouraged about what Congress is, was unable to do. Um, I'm certainly one who believes that the deficits matter, uh, that we've got to get our financial house in order. Senator Warner has taken a lead in those efforts. Uh, and the discouragement came from kind of everything that I'd seen uh, happen uh, in Congress really was, it's not happening. And so I started thinking, how is a, how's a different way, uh, perhaps a, a, a better way, a more politically possible way of addressing the issue of our, of our budget challenges, the deficits and, and deficits. Another way that we can help pay down the debt and get our country's financial house back in order is to have a growing economy, put people to work. People who are working are paying taxes. The, the tre tremendous benefit that comes from that plan is that people who are working and earning an income, therefore providing for their families, putting food on their families' tables, saving for their kids' education, saving for their own retirements, uh, and so, the, I decided to focus my efforts on trying to grow the economy, not forgetting the efforts at trying to hold the line on spending and addressing the deficit issues, but to do it in a way that certainly a much more positive message to Kansans and to Americans is there's, a, there's something we can do here that um, does awfully good things for Americans across the country and at the same time a growing economy helps us get out of the financial condition that we're in uh, as a nation, as a country. So the Startup Act is the, is the result of that. Uh, it basically focuses on uh, five areas uh, of, of ways that we can help uh, entrepreneurials, uh, those with entrepreneurial skills and talents to succeed in the United States and in the process of succeeding, putting people to work. Uh, as you would expect, it has a regulatory component. Uh, the regulatory environment, and particularly an uncertain regulatory environment, is a significant handicap. Uh, we do not expect to address in the Startup Act every piece of, uh, of legislation that can be introduced or will be introduced in regard to regulation. Uh, this is a very broad topic that uh, our colleagues in Congress uh, will and are addressing, but we do know that the regulatory environment is one that handicaps uh, entrepreneurs uh, and job creation. 
Uh, we know, and this bill addresses the second component being uh, attract uh, and retain capital. That's a very difficult challenge for many startup businesses, and this legislation addresses that issue as well. Uh, 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 those are broad topics that many members of Congress are dealing uh, with. Uh, some of the things that are unique to me about the Startup Act uh, is we're working to uh, encourage the commercialization of federal research. Uh, millions of dollars are spent every day, uh, uh, year-round throughout the country, particularly at uh, universities, academic institutions, research is occurring. Uh, and we want to make certain that we focus at least a portion of that research on ideas that can be commercialized uh, meaning that they can be used to create the opportunity to grow a business to bring those ideas to market. And so we incentivize uh, the commercialization of uh, research occurring across our country. Um, we want to attract and retain entrepreneurial and highly skilled uh, workforce. Uh, and this legislation, again, something unique to uh, the Startup Act is that we create additional visa opportunities for individuals uh, in the United States either because they are entrepreneurs and are willing to put, uh, raise the capital, put capital investment at stake, and employ additional people, um, or they are receiving an, a uh, master's or uh, PhD in science, engineering, um, the STEM issue. Uh, and again, this legislation then creates visa opportunities for those two categories of individuals to uh, remain in the United States uh, if they meet the criteria uh, uh, provided in the legislation, uh, and in the process of doing so, they create a highly educated, trained workforce and also, also an entrepreneurial talent uh, in the United States. And finally, we try to create some competition uh, among the states, uh, not by mandating states uh, to, to take certain actions in regard to uh, an environment to, to grow business and to create entrepreneurs, but by saying that every state, uh, we will collect the information, the Department of Commerce will report uh, what each state is doing in regard to an entrepreneurial environment uh, and therefore create the opportunity for entrepreneurs, those who are looking at starting up a business, uh, to, to make a choice about where to locate, uh, again, creating competition among states for the, for the, to try to attract uh, that entrepreneurial talent and the skills that the uh, legislation promotes. Lots of examples in, in our state of Kansas. I would consider uh, Kansas a very entrepreneurial state, as I know Senator Warner does uh, in regard to Virginia. But you can look at uh, companies that began in the back, um, back room, in the, in the garage, in the basement of homes across our state, across the country, uh, that resulted in thousands of jobs being created. And uh, certainly the statistics bear out. Uh, and I know that uh, Steve Case can uh, very uh, adequately describe the opportunities for job growth in this country uh, because of um, entrepreneurs. And uh, historically, that's been the key to American success, and we want to uh, revitalize that opportunity, uh, recreate what has worked for our country and its economy in the past. And uh, we believe the Startup Act is one more component along a series of pieces of legislation that have been introduced in the last few months that move um, Congress in a bipartisan way, uh, in, a, in a legislation that can be supported broadly uh, to a better day uh, for America and its people and their ability to put food on their family's table to grow and to pursue success in the process of pursuing that su success, once again, live the American dream. Let me um, uh, turn the, the podium over to uh, my colleague and friend from Virginia, Senator Warner. Well, thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Senator Moran. Let me thank you for... Um, this partnership, uh, I think uh, this is uh, one more example of evidence that there are actually people on the Hill that can work together uh, to put the country's interest first. Um, I won't reiterate everything Senator Moran said. I just want to make a, hit a couple of high points. One, you know, we always talk up here about the fact that we want us to support small businesses. Small businesses create two-thirds of the, the jobs in our country. If you dig down into that, and I think Steve will probably mention this, that's Mostly true, but most of the small businesses that are actually creating the jobs are what we call in the industry the gazelle firms, those startup firms that grow very rapidly. And echoing what Senator Moran said, we need to find ways that we can uh, boost that effort. And as somebody who spent, uh, actually I can still claim, more time on the private sector side actually doing this as an early stage investor, uh, entrepreneur and venture capitalist, uh, 20 years in that business, only uh, 
still single digits in the elected office business, uh, which these days I guess is important to point out. Um, uh, you know, I think this piece of legislation uh, is a giant step forward. Um, and it does, and as, as Senator Moran mentioned, it builds on some other legislation that, and I think Steve will mention this as well, uh, that builds upon the good work the Kauffman Foundation has done, and Steve Case, who's on the President's Jobs Council, has done, you know, issues around how we can get startup companies going public on a faster way, uh, changes to Sarbanes-Oxley, uh, Section 404, that uh, uh, increasing the number of investors that can uh, go into startup companies. Uh, key points. Startup Act builds on that prior legislation, legislation that uh, Senator Moran and I both support in a couple of ways. One, it says, how do we make sure, and we're going to hear not only uh, from the Kauffman Foundation, Steve Case, but we're going to hear uh, from folks who are uh, trying to live the American dream um, around this issue of immigration. Steve mentioned earlier in our, my act in my office that we have to win the world competition for the best and brightest talent. And taking, stealing your line, you know, before, you know, I get to a little bit before you, so I'm going to steal that. You, for, you forgot to steal it first. You know, for a long time, anybody in the tech business has said, let's staple a green card to people who are in getting graduate degrees from our great American universities who are in the STEM fields. Well, this legislation puts together a program that basically would make that happen, create a whole new... Um, visa uh, program uh, to retain that um, foreign-born talent that if they're graduating with graduate degrees in the STEM fields from American universities, choose to stay and work in America. A couple program with that is an effort that says, if you all happen to be already here on an H-1B or one other visa, and you want to leave your current employment and actually go out and start a business and hire Americans, that's virtually impossible to do. So we create an entrepreneur's visa path uh, where we can, again, have talent that's already here in this country, already here legally in this country. Uh, if they can start up a business, invest in that business, hire Americans, put people to work, as Senator Moran said, uh, we're going to give a path to make that happen. Uh, as Senator Moran mentioned as well, we go down the path in terms of regulatory reform. How do we make sure that uh, we do a better job both within executive agencies and independent agencies of doing cost-benefit analysis? This builds upon current policy that's already there, but, but fills it out a little bit more. How do we make sure that as, um, as somebody who's been involved as a venture capitalist, how do we make sure that there are tax investment policies that reward patient capital? You know, back in the heydays of uh, the IPO market, back in the late 90s, you'd see money flow into these companies, but then it would flow out very quickly. F people would be flipping. How do we create uh, tax treatment that will actually incent investors to invest in startup companies and actually keep that capital there for, for up to five years? And then, uh, Sen. Moran mentioned this, uh, in addition to the competition among states, how do, we get, how do we take the research that's done in the lab and get it into the commercial sector? Uh, particularly transactional, uh, translational research. How do we take a small, not spend new research money, take a small sliver of, of uh, dollars, uh, of existing research dollars, and redirect that um, into the commercialization sector? And, you know, some of the things, this area is, needs some more work, I, I believe, uh, but we, there's a lot of talk about commercialization. I think this effort... Um, put some resources behind that in the neighbor of $100 million a year and uh, also start some, stirring up potentially some competition amongst higher educational institutions. We will get some blowbacks, and Moran and I have realized in what we are doing in terms of shaking up uh, some of the tech transfer offers in our universities, uh, but that kind of debate is needed if we're going to really um, win the worldwide talent for the best jobs and making sure that the greatest ideas that are created at our universities actually translate into jobs. So with that, let me turn it over to my good friend and uh, uh, fellow Virginian, Steve Case. Thanks, Mark. Well, it's a great pleasure to be here, and thank you, Senator uh, Warner and Senator Moran, for taking the leadership on, on this issue. Uh, as I think everybody knows, America is really built by entrepreneurs. The story of America is the story of entrepreneurship. We didn't become the leading economy in the world just by accident. Fortune 500 companies don't just automatically become Fortune 500 companies. They start as startups and eventually they grow and create a lot of jobs and economic uh, growth. So as a nation, if we're going to focus on the economy and focus on jobs, 
we've got to focus on entrepreneurship. And that's what the Startup Act is designed to, to do, to really put this on the center stage and build bipartisan support uh, for pro-entrepreneurship legislation. They'll make it easier for entrepreneurs to get companies started, easier for them to get the, the capital and the talent to, to scale those companies at the right stage, make it easier for them to go public. As we, the Kaufman research indicates that 90% of jobs are created after companies go public. So it's, it's really important legislation and something that we need to move quickly to, uh, to adopt. The good news around entrepreneurship is entrepreneurs are optimistic. They see all kinds of opportunities in the world. They want to kind of take, take on those opportunities. The bad news is the last five years, it's become more difficult for entrepreneurs. Actually, startups are down 23%. If they had stayed at the same level they were five years ago, we have two million more jobs in our economy right now. So this really is a key job creator. The Kaufman data also suggests for the last three decades, high growth companies, companies growing 20% a year, so essentially means they're doubling every four years, account for 40 million jobs, really all the net job creation. So it really is around high growth entrepreneurial companies, and this legislation helps move the ball forward. I give the president credit for getting the thing started, and early this year he created the Startup America Partnership. Actually, I'm heading over from, from here to the White House. We have a board meeting of the Startup America Partnership, and the president will be part of that, and we'll give him an update on, on the initiative there, as well as some of the legislative momentum. Uh, with the Jobs Council, led by Jeff Immelt, that I'm uh, proud to be part of and chair the High Growth Entrepreneurial Subcommittee of it, met with the president about six weeks ago, laid out a, a framework in terms of what the private sector needed to do, what the administration needed to do, and also what Congress needed to do. And I'm very encouraged in that last six weeks. Now, there's three different bills that have been introduced in the Senate. One, the Agree Act by Senator Coons and Senator Rubio. Uh, then last week, Senator Schumer and Senator Toomey introduced something focused specifically on IPOs. And now the Startup Act from Senator Warner and Senator Moran really take it to another level, particularly by including the central issue around winning the global battle for talent. We, we, we're, it's crazy our immigration policy right now. We understand the complexity of immigration, the sensitivity of immigration, but in particular, we need to focus on making sure we are attracting the best and brightest, not just to come to our educational institutions, but then to stay here and start companies here, as opposed to essentially forcing them to leave to start companies in other countries to, to compete with us. So it's a very important time for our nation. Uh, everybody's focused on, on uh, and should be focused on jobs. There's now growing focus in the last few months in terms of the central role entrepreneurs play. This legislation uh, that uh, Senator Moran and Senator Warner have been working on for some time is terrific and really does move the ball forward by dealing with talent, dealing with capital, dealing with regulation, some of the core <laughs> underpinnings. But now it's time to get something done. And it's really time for entrepreneurs all around the nation to, to, to kind of march on Washington and say it's time for the Congress to act. It's time to build bipartisan support. It's time to put entrepreneurs at the front of the agenda because they are the job creators. They are the innovators. They are the folks that are going to help us win uh, the next generation of, of battles in terms of new industries uh, the, around, the, uh, the, around the world. So I'm very grateful that they've taken the leadership on this issue. It's now time for others in the Senate and then others in the, in the House to join together. I've had a lot of meetings, a lot of people in the Senate and the House and Republicans and Democrats for the last couple of months. And this is an issue where people agree something should happen and something should get done. And now's the time to act. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here on behalf of the Kauffman Foundation. I just want to say a few words about uh, some of the findings of uh, Kauffman Foundation research uh, relevant to this uh, important set of issues. Uh, research conducted or supported by the Kauffman Foundation over the past decade has done a great deal to clarify the absolutely central importance of entrepreneurship and new firm formation uh, to the health of the U.S. economy, not only in terms of uh, creating jobs and promoting short-term prosperity, but also in terms of spurring innovation uh, and long-term growth. Uh, when it comes to uh, job creation, uh, the numbers are absolutely unambiguous. New firms are the main engine of job creation in the United States. Uh, between 1977 and 2005, there were only seven years in which existing firms created more jobs than they destroyed. Uh, so the bottom line is simple. Without startups, there is no net job creation uh, in this country. Uh, when it comes to innovation, <coughs> Kaufman supported research has found uh, that the productivity of firms that exit the market is generally lower, uh, which is a good thing, uh, than firms that stay, uh, existing firms in the market, which in turn is lower than surviving new firms. So the, over, the churn, the dynamic churn of firms in the economy, and particularly the entry of new firms, uh, is the lifeblood that brings new ideas and better ways of doing things into the economy, raising productivity, uh, and ultimately living standards. Uh, the bad news is, as we've uh, heard already, uh, that uh, all is not well with entrepreneurship in the United States. 
uh, new firm starts uh, are down, uh, and this started before the Great Recession. Uh, Kaufman research shows uh, that uh, that new employer businesses started falling, the number of new employer businesses started falling after 2006, it's fallen 27 percent between 2006 and 2009. Looking even longer term, um, <clears throat> Kaufman supported research shows uh, a, a long term decline uh, in the level of job creation by startups. Back in the 1980s, uh, total gross job creation by startups amounted to 3.5% of total employment on average. Uh, uh, by the 90s, that had fallen to 3%. In uh, the past decade, it's down to 2.6%. Um, so uh, the timing of these numbers of, of, uh, of declining startup activity show that our problems with our economy aren't just cyclical today, they're structural. Uh, and structural problems need structural solutions. Uh, in particular, uh, it is vitally important uh, to identify all those regulatory and other policy barriers uh, that inhibit entrepreneurs from starting new businesses, bringing new ideas uh, into our lives, uh, and systematically dismantling them. And nothing less than the long-term health and vitality of the U.S. economy uh, depends uh, on how successful we are in that effort. Thank you very much. We also wanted to bring forward, a, uh, we, we often talk about this question of how we retain and win the, the global challenge for the best talent, and uh, we've got a young couple who would uh, exemplify some of the opportunities, I think, that will come out of some of our uh, uh, immigration reforms. Thank you, Senators. Uh, hi, I'm Nalima Reddy. And I'm Michelle Ayer. We are here on behalf of Immigration Voice, which is a national grassroots uh, organization representing high school workers like us, who have come together to advocate for change uh, in the current legal immigration process. We are fortunate to have uh, received the opportunities and the education provided to us by this great nation and are privileged to be part of the U.S. workforce as well as our local communities. I have a master's in quantitative finance. I'm part of the financial services industry and believe I have much to contribute and have the skills and experience to be part of the solution in this challenging financial environment. However, the current legal immigration system does not allow us to give back and contribute to the economy to our full potential. Meaningless country limits, job mobility restrictions, and cumbersome procedures create long wait times, uh, in most cases, decades. And uncertainty for thousands of people with advanced degrees who are raring to contribute more to, this, uh, to their fields and the American economy. It puts an enormous strain on our careers, as well as our personal lives, hampers professional advancement, and prevents us from making long-term financial commitment, commitments, such as buying a house. This bill ensures that advanced degree holders in STEM fields, like myself, can fully participate in the economy by allowing job mobility and creating incentives for innovation. I have been in the US for nine years, and I'm still waiting for my permanent residency. I have a bachelor's in computer science and master's in digital media, and I'm part of an thriving and exciting technology industry, helping to create the next generation media and commerce applications. Over the course of my career, I was part of three startups, but was unable to continue working on them because of restrictions placed by my current visa situation. On multiple occasions, I've had to make the difficult choice of fulfilling my dreams or living in the country I love. This bill would mean that I would not have to make the choice anymore, but would be able to be an entrepreneur right here Let's create the next Google, the next Facebook, the next AOL right here in Kansas, in Virginia, in the US. Nilima and I would like to thank Senator Warner and Senator Moran on behalf of Immigration Voice and high school immigrants all over the country for introducing the bill and their leadership on legal immigration. This bill would not only enable us to contribute effectively to the economy and our communities, but will also create new jobs and allow America to retain the best and brightest of the world and increase its competitiveness in an increasingly flat world. Thank you. Thank you. And um, we'll take a couple questions. I have to scoot out. We, there is a, one more budget uh, bipartisan, bicameral session. There's There's one. Still question. Hope. There is still hope. All right. Questions, comments, suggestions? Do we have a role to send anything in the House of Leadership? What are its chances? 
You want to start with that? Because you uh, I only would say that uh, I have an appointment uh, when I leave here with Senator Reid. Uh, one of the topics of conversation is uh, trying to indicate to him how valuable this is to, to all of us, uh, and that Senator Warner and I are committed to, to finding that path. Um, not many things around here seem to survive as a freestanding bill, so history and uh, predictability would suggest that uh, it, it becomes a part of something, but uh, we, we certainly want as many components, and we're certainly open to other ideas uh, as this process goes. We're working with our colleagues. And I would just echo that uh, you know, this might be that rare sweet spot. Uh, the ideas are coming out from the Kauffman Foundation, they're coming from the President's Jobs Council. Everybody agrees that this is an area, uh, these high growth uh, startup firms ought to get support. This might actually happen. <laughs> and we're going to work to make it happen. When the President's Council started in last January, Mr. Casey, um, some of your Republican colleagues took some shots at it and dismissed it as being just some you know, words from the White House. But yet you based the bill on a lot of the things that came out of it. I just want to take a comment on well, uh, I, I only would reiterate that uh, there's too many shots taken uh, at too many people around here too often. Uh, in often uh, circumstances, trying to create a political environment uh, that uh, diminishes the chances of somebody's success. We very much want uh, the Obama administration and the Republican-controlled House, the Democrat majority in the Senate, want us to all to come together and have success, not for a political party, uh, not for a Republican or Democrat victory, but for uh, an improved circumstance for the lives of American people. And uh, we're, uh, you know, we started with the Kauffman Foundation, uh, obviously a, an academic uh, think tank, not uh, partisan in any way, uh, and learned that the things that we were proposing uh, were supported by the, the, the many of the things uh, that we were proposing in this legislation are supported by uh, the President's uh, Council on uh, jobs and competitiveness. Uh, that's just an example of where if you don't start out looking for a fight, you can find common ground. Uh, and we're delighted to find that common ground. Uh, and obviously, any piece of legislation that passes Congress, any of the proposals that are included in this, that currently are in this legislation that are included in some other piece of legislation, is going to take a president's signature. Now, let me just add that, you know, retaining the best talent in the world, helping startup companies get through the regulatory process, and get access to capital, trying to keep, create competition between states and universities in terms of getting good ideas from the lab into the marketplace. You know, I ask you, is that, are those Democratic, Republican ideas? I think they're American ideas. If I could if I just add, the, uh, obviously any time there's a new thing like a council introduced, there's going to be some skepticism even among the participants about what's really going to happen here. And I think my, from my perspective, I think my colleagues on the Jobs Council, we weren't particularly interested in spending a lot of time writing nice white papers that sit on the shelf. We think the nation is at a crossroads and, and getting the right uh, policy in place to support business generally, but particularly entrepreneurship in particular is critically important. I don't think we have a plan B as a nation. This, as I said at the beginning, this nation was built by entrepreneurs that drives innovation, that drives job growth, that drives our economy, that ensures our global competitiveness, and we really need to double down on, on entrepreneurship. So the Jobs Council made some recommendations. There are a lot of other recommendations from Kauffman Foundation uh, and other groups, and I think Senator uh, Warner and Senator Moran took, I think, the best of those ideas to create the, uh, the Startup Act. And I think it's very important that people focus on this and, 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 and get it done. We, as I said, the nation doesn't have a plan B. Thank you very much. Uh, for those of you who uh, write about business and entrepreneurship, I commend to you the Kauffman Foundation and their research. You ought to explore what they have done. Uh, it's, um, and it, Mr. Kaufman is an example of the entrepreneurial spirit uh, and success that we'd love to replicate. Uh, started a drug company in his garage and ultimately came, became, in a Kansas City world, he was the owner of the Royals, which became his greatest fame to us, but created many jobs in the process of, of, uh, of starting a drug company. And we very much appreciate their role in, in exploring, educating us, uh, and providing us with the uh, with basic information that's necessary to, to determine good policy. So thank you very, thank you very much. much. Uh, we're delighted that you were here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Very much.